It's no secret that I don't like the city. I'm actually quite a bit afraid of the city. It makes me feel trapped and uncomfortable. And so I wanted to take a trip to a place far from any big city. A place with air so pure that I could see millions of stars at night and breathe deeply and profoundly. That place for me was in the southernmost part of Argentina, in Patagonia. From the moment I landed, I felt at home. Like, this place could have easily been in Colorado. It was dry, desolate, cold, and mountainous, and I loved it. I was finally able to wear my jacket and scarf and long sleeve shirts just like as if I was back at home. However, one striking difference about Patagonia was the wind. It's always blowing, relentlessly, and it's actually kind of peaceful. It's a constant. A constant cold, a constant hair messer upper, a constant reminder of where I was. And I was alone. And I loved it. Over the course of five days, I did several tours, just because of ease, and I got to experience incredible landscapes with a bunch of complete strangers. And I got to speak a lot of Spanish, because they speak Spanish down there, and apparently I speak it too. And I am so grateful for that fact. I actually had many deep and fluid conversations in this third language, which made me feel amazing. <laughs> Language really is a key that opens so many doors to so many people. Think about it this way. A day is a real success if you didn't speak your native language. So I was alone, but I wasn't really. I met so many distinct and interesting people in Argentina, and I didn't have to be my usual shy self because I was a solo traveler and I could be whoever I wanted to be and I chose to be the best version of me. I met Paula, and Osher, and Nina, and Anthony, and Gustavo, and Sandra. Oh, and I met Sebastian in Buenos Aires. And each day I thought, man, there's something really special about this place. Because it attracts all these lovely people and their positive and welcoming attitudes. And that something special was no secret. I mean, this place offers something so hard to find. Just look at it. They say it's a matter of time A thousand days and the sun won't shine Before I come back to you When I'm happy Nothing's going to stop me I'm making my way home I'm making my way For your love I will go far at the end of each day, when I was leaving the new place I had just discovered, I felt an overwhelming sense of peace and satisfaction. I can't really describe it, but it was just pure, and I could feel it all over my body. It was something I had only felt a few times in my life, and it was so good. And a big part of my trip was, as a good friend put it, admiring not just the creation, but also the creator. I was content, and I was in an amazing place and I felt so blessed to have been there at that particular moment in time, ordained by a God that is so good. I had a lot of time to think. Here's what I concluded. When you travel alone, you find your comfort zone, and you willingly venture out of it. You find your interests, and you diversify them, and then you find people who share those interests, and you connect with them. But most importantly, when you travel alone, you find yourself. And I learned so much about myself. I learned that I'm capable of many things. I learned that I have endurance, and that I am more outgoing than I usually let on. I learned about what home meant for me. I think, as long as there are mountains and nice people, I can feel at home. I actually won't be home very much this year, and I'm okay with that. I want to be that person who's always on the move. I want to be that cloud that can't be pinned down, because I am an object in motion. I have inertia, and the forces of life will not act upon me. I am a traveler, and I will never lose the spirit.